Yes, that was me getting dropped from the front bunch and they were never to be seen again in that ride. So welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel where today's video is all about what we just saw then, a new feature on Zwift called Video Screen Captures. Pulling up all the details about this, this feature captures the previous 15 seconds of in-game gameplay, both video and audio. It's stored locally in MP4 format at 720 resolution, and it only works at this point in time for Apple TV, Mac, iPhone, and iPad. PC and Android, just wait a little while. You may be seeing it on those platforms soon. So Apple devices only for the moment. The captures are automatic for what Zwift call notable moments. Now, notable moments, I'll pull up a list here. Taking a segment or a jersey, setting a new PR, finishing a challenge or a mission, gaining a level, unlocking an achievement, finishing an event, completing a workout or training plan, or completing a new route. Now, the captures will be automatically taken should any of those take place in-game, or you can manually capture it using the action bar in-game. The manual capture is not in the companion app just yet, but I believe it is coming soon. This feature can be enabled or disabled. It was enabled by default on my account. And videos can be shared via Strava or any other platform that's compatible with video format, which is pretty much all of them. Uh, one thing of note too, this is the very first part of integration that Strava are allowing with their new API that allows video sharing via activities. Okay, so that's all the theory. Let's have a look at this in action. Okay, loading Zwift here on my M1 MacBook Pro, scrolling down through the settings, and we can now see right there, video screenshots enabled by default. I can disable that if I like. And let's get this party started by switching it off battery saver of any type and max speed before jumping into Tour de Zwift stage eight short. Okay, in the pens here before the event begins and pulling up the action bar and clicking on it straight away, just to see what it does. It's going to capture the previous 15 seconds or so. Pulling it up again straight away, it will be greyed out because it's just still filling up that buffer. And when it's ready to go again, we can re-click it and capture the other 15 seconds or so of game footage. Okay, with those captured, let's pull up the first file, which I'm calling an instant replay here. And surprise, surprise, it's captured exactly what we thought around about 15 seconds or so of footage. This is all pretty boring though. Let's have a look at how it operates in game. Alrighty, so here's the capture direct from the Mac using the screen recorder, so it's a little bit laggy. And well, surprise, surprise, we've spotted something we want to capture, the Loch Ness Monster. All right, pulling up the action bar for that, enabling the manual capture, and then pulling up the replay, which grabs the audio and video a lot better than the screen recorder was actually. So there we have the 15 seconds leading up to me pressing the button, including the button press itself right there. Alrighty, and for the automatic capture, here's the last 15 seconds of the event that I was in today, which would be a notable moment. A little bit laggy, a little bit jaggy, but uh, I still managed to capture that. Okay, end of the ride. Let's have a look at what happens when we finish our ride and go to the automatic uploads. So some stats there. Radio. Now we're able to upload two photos and one video. And we can see the videos there with a the little film strip icon. Let's just scroll through here. Okay, so the highlight one is added. We'll leave that as is. We can't favorite these either. So that's the video that I want. Uh, we'll ignore that one. It's the same thing pretty much, but in still form. But if I wanted to change the video, I can select the other ones, including the manual ones that I've taken in game. All right, that's what we'll use. So yeah, again, two photos and one video. If you want to upload any more, you need to do that manually. This is just a Zwift slash Strava limitation. Now the upload itself has a little progress bar there in green, depending on your bandwidth, depending on uh, maybe a few other things. It may go fast, it may go slow. I've got 40 megabits up and it's still taking a while to upload that 18 megabyte or so file. And that's all that it requires there. Okay, cool, we're back to the main screen. And in a few minutes time, it will pop up on Strava. Now, while I wait for that to occur, let's pull up the file system here and under slash movies slash Zwift under my user profile, you can see all the files saved here. So around about 17 megabytes in size. And these are what gets uploaded to Strava if we choose to do so, or to any other service if we want to grab those files manually off the system. Alrighty, and finally, uploaded to Strava. Here's what things look like on the activity feed. 
the video playing there. You can mute or unmute that. Jumping further into those, a little bit higher resolution, but still quite a difficult to see what kind of what's peculiar I'm putting out. And finally, loading up Strava Mobile and the activity feed and the movie plays in the mini player there too. Now, if you unmute that, you'll get the full sounds as recorded in game two. So there it is, video screenshots in action. It's all pretty straightforward. Now, a few extra things to know about this. Those videos appearing on Strava may take a few extra minutes as Strava compresses the absolute life out of the already compressed video before putting it up on your activity. And watch the storage space on your local device. These videos will take up a little more space than just the standard screenshots. So if you're running low on storage or will never use this feature, maybe jump into the settings and disable this. Now I do expect to see a few feature changes for this rolling out over the next few weeks or months, in particular the one for the companion app to activate that capture. If you're on Apple TV, you don't wanna to be touching that remote any more than you need to. The companion app is much more friendly. Alrighty, and with that, we'll leave it there for today. As always, if you've enjoyed this content or learned something new, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel and to be alerted of new videos uploading here, and we'll see you soon.